You're watching the Highlight Zone with Wing 15 Sports Director Glenn Marini. Local sports coverage you can count on. In my years in Southside, I haven't seen us win beat Homestead in my three years. Hey, we're going to do everything we can to come out and win the SAC. This game is very important. But win an SAC, you start with no. Obviously, every SAC game is going to be tough. Everyone's out to get us because we won it last year. I told my kids, you know, we're going to have to play together and uh, be fundamentally sound. We better be ready to play and better be, uh, you know, mentally ready. Say goodbye to the holidays and hello to the hardwood. Yeah, the presents have been unwrapped. The New Year's ball has dropped and the eggnog was excellent. All right, but now it's time to get back to business. First edition of the Highlight Zone here in the year 2022. And what a way to tip things off. We're talking Homestead at Southside. It is your Highlight Zone game of the week, and it was a good one. Spartans and Archers, two of three teams tied for the conference lead in the SAC. Homestead had won 18 in a row against Southside, but the Archers are surging, and they were surging in the second quarter. That was Ashton Johnson for the three. Then Johnson again. That would tie the game at 23. Archers end the second quarter on an 11-2 run. They led 28-25 over Homestead at the break. Third quarter, Fletcher Lawyer, the three. That knots it at 30. But going the other way, no give up in the Archers. Lamontrell Manning is the man. He ties it again at 33. Lawyer, he starts to take over from there, though. Look at him with the bucket. He had 24 to the future Purdue Boilermaker. That nodded it at 35, then Lawyer. Spartans on a run. They're now up by four after that shot. Let's go to the fourth quarter. Omarion Washington gets Southside within two, but Kyron Kale Pueki with a big shot of the game. Watch him here. Drill it from the corner. And Homestead goes on to win a tight one, 59 to 53 at Southside. Well, obviously, no, Fletcher's, he's a good player. I mean, he's going to Purdue for a reason. And everybody knows that, so they're going to be face guarding him. We all, everyone else just got to step up, score some points, and then get some rebounds and play hard. We're a strong D team, and we're only getting better. Um, each and every night, everyone steps up tonight. Kyron stepped up huge for us. He took care of the ball and knocked down a big three for us down in the clutch. Obviously, it's a crosstown rival. It's a SAC game. It's a tough game. It's going to be a tough one. And uh, they're our undefeated team in the conference, so we knew they were going to come out tough, and we had a big game. And uh, we knocked down big shots in the clutch, and uh, that's what we do. Next up, Southside hosts Marion. That's tomorrow, while Homestead is at Blackhawk on Tuesday night. Like Homestead and Southside, Concordia came into the night unbeaten in conference play. The Cadets looking to stay hot against Bishop Lures. Nick Thompson kicking it to sophomore Isaiah Zay. Zay with the three. Lures in the lead early, but Concordia's got a freshman you got to keep an eye on. Avery Cook. Starting to heat up. He drills the three. And then it's Concordia's Alan Termolin with the jumper. And the game is knotted in the early going. Check out some defense. A Johnny Washington has been a breakout star on the highlight zone this year, mostly for offense. But did you see the rejection from the sophomore? And then Washington with a difficult deuce as it is Concordia staying undefeated in conference with a win 56 52 at Bishop Lures. Let's go to Kilmer Court. Another good matchup. Panthers been playing some good ball lately. Panthers already with wins against New Haven and Wayne this week. Snyder hosting Northrop Bruins. Jalen Jackson drilling the three. JJ 36 on the night. Not bad, right? A Bruins working the ball to Dalman Alexander. He gets the bucket down low for the guys in orange. But Snyder's Carson Jenkins has been hot over the last couple of weeks. He would not stop tonight. He drills the shot right there. And then Mr. Elevation himself, Aiden Lambert. You know what time it is when he gets in the open court. It is jam time as Snyder wins at Kilmer Court over a good Northrop squad, 74 to 68. Northside came in having won four of its last five. The Legends on the road at Wayne. We pick it up in the first quarter, and it's Rodney Wood. So many weapons. On that north side team, he drills the three, but Wayne firing back. This is freshman Chase Barnes. Know the name, know the game. He splashes three, and Hall of Famer Gary Andrews says that's not, you know, really the defense I was going for there. Uh, it's Jordan Green on the alley-oop right there for the Legends. But coming back the other way, Javon Lewis, the sophomore. Lefty, stroke, good. And Wayne up five after one. You can bet Coach Pick is jacked. 
Second quarter, though, Brayshawn Bassett left alone. Too much space. He drills it. And Northside wins at Wayne, 69-61. A lot of good games in the SAC. Speaking of, last stop in the SAC tonight. Carroll still looking for its first win of the season. They were Dwang, facing Dwanger. The Saints uh, won the Lake City Holiday Tournament in Warsaw over the break. And that's Sam Campbell to C.J. Piper. That's good basketball for two. Dwanger up by three in the first quarter. Jackson Pardon, he's got some skill. He gets a bucket for Ryan Abbott's team there. But Dwanger up 11 to 8 at that point. Preston Ross, big guy, big skills. And watch him absorb the contact and jam it through. That's an and one dunk. And Dwanger up by five after one. Second quarter, Piper unselfish. Funding Rocco Sioka. Sioka cleaning up as Dwanger beats Carroll 75 to 53. Saints another dub. Up in Albion, Central Noble still undefeated, still ranked number one in the state in 2A as the Cougars hosting NECC rival Garrett Logan guard in the early going just too much at six foot six. He had 13 points and nine boards did guard. Garrett coming the other way. Tyler Gator with a little baseline jumper right there to tie things up. But Connor Asijan's going to Wisconsin, and he's going to play in the Big Ten for a reason. Asijan, known for the offense. How about the pilfer and the punch? You got to love it. Asijan with 1,979 points after scoring a 21 tonight. So he's only 21 away now from 2,000. You're going to see Jason Bailey splash for Garrett. But a Asijan is tough to cover, especially one-on-one. -on -one. And when he's doing Connor Asijan things, he's just too tough as Central Noble continues to stay undefeated with a 63-28 win against Garrett. Staying in the NECC, east side at Fairfield, the Blazers unbeaten at 10-0, ranked sixth in the state's two-way pool. Don't sleep on Ed Bentley's team. First quarter, it's Caden Moffler with the bucket as Eastside's on board first. And then, well, you saw Moffler score one. Why not another bucket for Moffler down low? Great feed. That is good basketball. Eastside up 4-2. More from Eastside. Nick Snyder, kid is a heck of a baseball player. And he gets a little turnaround in the post as Eastside led by four. Then it's Mr. Consistency for Eastside, Gabe Trevino. Trevino with some hustle and the bucket. You gotta love it. And Eastside stays unbeaten with a 60-45 win on the road. Final stop for boys hoops tonight. We're talking Northern Lakes Conference, Warsaw at Northridge. The Tigers of Warsaw ranked 20th in the state's 4A poll this week. A lot of that is uh, thanks to Jackson Gold. He's having a heck of a season. He hits the three there. Warsaw up by five in the first. Then it's Gold from way deep. Yeah, he had 28 on the game as Warsaw led by eight. Northridge. Trying to stay in it, Jonas Steiner nails the three, but simply too much Warsaw as the Tigers win on the road tonight, 61-47 to at Northridge. Well, that is going to do it for the fellas on the hardwood, but coming up after the break, the ladies take over the highlight zone. A couple of huge games in the NECC. That includes 3A number two Garrett putting its 13-game winning streak on the line at an always tough Central Noble team. In the Northeast State, first place on the line is undefeated Columbia City would head down to Decatur to face a good Belmont squad. And in the SAC, Homestead ranked number one overall in the state this week. Can the Spartans keep it up against Southside? We get all that and more coming up next on The Zone. The NECC tournament tips off next week, and the Garrett girls will have a huge bullseye on their back. That's what happens when you're 15 and 1, ranked second in the state's 3A poll, and looking pretty darn good this season. Garrett 6 and 0 in conference play coming in. Railroaders trying to stay on track against a solid Central Noble program that was 5 and 1 in the NECC coming in. Ashley Gray red hot in the early going for Central Noble as they led by a couple, but Morgan Ostrowski. Down low for Garrett, going to play some college volleyball at IUPY. The skills translate to the basketball court, too. Garrett led by three at that point. Let's go to the second quarter. Chrissy Sloan left open, and she drills the three. It's a six-point Garrett lead, though, and about mid-second quarter is where Garrett really starts to take over. Natalie Armstrong, the star senior, with a three as no problem for Garrett. They go on to win 62-23 at Central Noble. I think it's just how unselfish
selfish we are and how hard we work in practice. We go at it every day, and we just know that by the end of the season, we want to be uh, competing for a state championship, and we know what it takes now. Um, you know, you come on the road to a, a good program, a good team, uh, and a huge crowd. And you, you could have been a little lackadaisical, but we weren't. We were ready to go from the tip and uh, really never let down. That is a good Garrett team. Another great matchup in the NECC. 2A number three Fairfield hosting an Eastside squad that had won six of its last eight. Pick it up in the third quarter. Eastside's Sully Kessler for three. Eastside actually led by 12 at that point. Fairfield, though, oh, they were on the comeback trail. That was Kaylee Dillon with the bucket. Sydney Kessler here, though, for Eastside gets the basket, and Eastside still up double digits, but Fairfield gets hot. Bria Garber, she drills the three. Eastside sees their lead start to dwindle, and Fairfield, oh, they can feel it. How about Kaylee Dill Dillon with the bucket? Fairfield comes back to win this one against Eastside, 48-43 Falcons over Blazers. Down in the Cater, first place on the line in the SNEA, Columbia City and Belmont. 3 0 in conference play coming in. Both of them were. Haley Cole with some defense. That is a block in the early going. Then you'll see Belmont's Kenzie Filling looking for Macy Spiegel up court here. Spiegel with the bucket. Columbia City, though, up by 1 12 11 in the first. Let's go to the second quarter. Columbia City, they got a lot of shooters on this team. Tessa Tonkel would be one of them. She drilled the three right there. Four point advantage for the Eagles. You're going to see Filling with the bucket. She had 12 to lead Belmont, but Columbia City comes out victorious 43 36. A big win in conference for the Eagles. Let's stay in the Northeast State. Norwell looking to stay in that conference race. The Knights ranked sixth in the state's 3A poll. They were at Leo. That was Kennedy Felling with the bucket. She had 21. Leo, though, led by two. Emily Todd splashing three for Norwell. Leo still up by one. Leo hanging tough. Gabrielle Adams with the bucket down low. She had 11 points, did Adams. Leo up by three. You'll see Leah May. And May would lead Coach Chappelle's team with 18 points. Leo, again, still leading in the third, but Norwell puts its foot on the gas in the late going. It's Mackenzie Tolliver as Norwell wins this one at Leo, 55-42 to stay in the hunt. Let's go to the SAC. Hope said right number one this week in the Indiana Basketball Coaches Association. Paul Ayanna Patterson back on the court after missing their last game. And speaking of missing, Emma Royce did not. She drills the shot right there. Coming the other way for Southside, Justice Billingsley with the bucket. But man, Homestead's got a lot of firepower. You're talking about Maggie Kinsley here, the senior, going to play college ball at Saginaw Valley State up in Michigan. She drills the three. And now speaking of players that are going to play on the next level, Eastern Michigan signee Liv Smith with the bucket there. But, you know, Ayanna Patterson, Probably if everything goes well on her way to an Indiana All-Star bid and, uh, you know, maybe Mr. Basketball. Yeah, she had 25 and 12 as Homestead wins 65-47 at South. And just like Homestead, Snyder came in undefeated in conference play. The Panthers hosting a Northwood team 4-1 in the SAC. That's Jordan Poole and Poole goes splash. 19 points for the sophomore. Then Snyder's Jaya Lovett. What an addition she's been to Coach Sims' team. 26 points for Lovett. And then you'll see Northrop coming the other way. Amanda Thatcher, we've seen her do this plenty of times over the years for the Bruins. But simply too much Snyder. They got so many scores on that team. You're going to see Destiny Craig with the steal and the deuce and the foul. She had 19 points as Snyder beats Northrop 85 to 46. Carroll coming off a four-point win over Norwell on Tuesday night. The Chargers looking to stay hot against Bishop Dwanger. Third quarter, Carroll's Kayla Gibbs with a bucket there. 41-36, Carroll in the lead. More from Kayla. Taylor. <laughs> Taylor. Carroll off the steal. It's Taylor Fordyce. That's what I was trying to say. The Lexi Castator. Carroll up by seven. Let's go to the fourth. Dwanger trying to hang around and make this a ball game. Good ball movement for Vanessa Cook to shoot the 10-foot jumper. Carroll still up by nine, though. You're going to see Lexi Linder stop and pop for the Saints, but Carroll takes care of business at Bishop Dwenger. 64-53 charges over Saints. 
Let's go to Bishop Lures. The Knights hosting Concordia. A lot of wins right there in the stands with those two former coaches. Uh, we're talking about a Bishop Lures team and a Concordia team that are both looking for a dub. And Concordia's Annika Nelson gets the and one there in the third. She had seven, but Lures already up 39 to nine. And a parent. That is good basketball. Parent had 13 points that would tie for the Bishop Lures team lead. Then it's Parent feeding Addie Shank with the and one. Shank had two of her 10 right there. And then Anna Zimmerman just inside the arc. She drills it for Mark Pixley's team as Lures wins 57-21 against Concordia. Last stop tonight for girls hoops. Northside at Wayne after a hot start. The generals have cooled off. But would they get their mojo back against the legends? Well, it looked like it here in the first quarter. Amelia Diaz with the three. Wayne up by seven in the first. Later in that frame, Jalea Page gets the bucket for the legends. But Wayne, this is a team to watch out for in the future. Don't have any seniors, so they're going to be good and get a lot of experience this year. That was Khalees Collins, the sophomore with the bucket. Then it's Collins again as Wayne wins 66 to 35. Stay tuned. Your Peter Franklin Jewelers, Jim of the Night, is up next on The Zone. The Jim of the Night is next. You're watching The Highlight Zone. The new year is here. We're at Concordia Cheer. Have no fear. Jim of the Night is here. Let's go. As the ladies said, it is a new year, but the, the top honor on The Highlight Zone, it stays the same, or as the saying goes, if it ain't broke, don't fix it. With that, we crown the first gem of the night here in 2022. As always, it comes to you courtesy of our friends at Peter Franklin Jewelers, and it comes to us from Albion with love. Connor Asijan with a slam for the Central Noble Cougars. Again, Asijan, 1,979 points, needs 21 to get to 2,000. He can do that with a solid game up in Angola on Tuesday. Connor Asijan, Wisconsin bound, and that is your gem of the night. Now, as for next week's games, we've got a full slate of SAC doubleheaders as conference play heats up. We're talking Snyder at Homestead. That is one of the doubleheaders, as is Southside at Concordia. In Northeast 8 boys action, Leo heads to New Haven, and it's conference tournament time. Yeah, next Friday, we've got the ACAC tournament semifinals and the NACC tournament semifinals. All that and more next week right here on The Zone. Hey, final stop tonight, comments on the road. The K's at the Cincinnati Cyclones. And we picked things up in the first period where things were going very well for the Comets. On the power play, Matt Alvaro in front. Yeah, he deflected it in off of Marcus McIver's shot to make it one zip. It was his ninth goal of the season. And then just 20 seconds later, Oliver Cooper with a goal for the Comets. K's up 2-0 in the first. Unfortunately, they wouldn't be able to hang on. The Cyclones come back and win it in Cincinnati 5-4. K's are back home, though, tomorrow where they take on Toledo 7-30 at the Coliseum. So uh, a lot to take in tomorrow if you're a Comets fan as they take on Toledo, a team that, that beat them on Wednesday 72. So you can bet the case they're looking for some retribution. And that is going to do it for this week's Highlight Zone. We'll see you next Friday right here on Wayne 15.